am. These days, when you think of epic games, you're probably thinking of Gears of War or Unreal Tournament, but that wasn't always the case. The way I remember them was less angry men fighting angry alien men, and more bunnies fighting tortoises. Back in the 90s, when Epic could have mega games in their name and nobody would laugh, we weren't all about the muscle-bound sci-fi shooters and put out all sorts of games, from platformers to shmups and even a fighting game. Today, we're going to look at one such series of games, Jazz Jack Rabbit, because... um... Oh, 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 oh! Because... The first game is 21 years old this year, which means, legally, it's allowed to drink in America. Ah? Uh? Ah? Uh? Jazz Jackrabbit was an anthropomorphic green hare, because jackrabbits aren't actually rabbits, apparently. Thank you, Wikipedia. Taking his name from one of the developer's dogs, he rocks around space shooting tortoises because, in this universe, the story of the tortoise and the hare was just the start of thousands of years of full-blown war. Sort of like Warhammer 40,000, but with bunnies. In all seriousness, it actually reminds me a lot of Bucky O'Hare, but with the green hare and reptilian enemy, although it doesn't appear to have any forearm ducks. The 90s were weird. Anyway, the first game, simply titled Jazz Jack Rabbit, came out in 1994 to a universal cheer of... It's, um... It's kind of like Sonic. This was not entirely unfair, because... Well, it is a lot like Sonic. But hey, no shame in building off the things that work to create something new. Sometimes we get really good games like that. Also a lot of terrible ones. And if we're playing that game, it's probably close to Zool anyway. Throughout the game, you're trying to rescue your girlfriend, the Princess Eva Earlong, from the evil clutches of Devon Shell. Because how would we know it's a video game without a princess to rescue? It does, as you might have guessed by now, play somewhat like Sonic, but instead of jumping on enemies, you've got guns. Well, a gun, anyway. Somehow it's still less silly than Shadow the Hedgehog, but, you know, what isn't. The game itself, well, it's good, but it's not perfect. On the surface, it looks great with nice animations and decent music, but its controls aren't as smooth as they could be. Jazz is a little slippery, which can make precise platforming a real pain in the ass. And when combined with his running speed, you often find yourself running into enemies without enough time to react. Get the speed boost power up and FUCKING SHIT! You also can't really see that far ahead of yourself, which means you either end up slowly moving forward just so you don't hit anything, or just firing blindly in front of you constantly, which in itself is a pain since you can't just hold the button down, you have to keep hitting it. The view distance thing can be particularly awkward when dealing with bosses, since they can spend most of their time off screen only to fly in out of fucking nowhere and hit you. Don't get us wrong, it's a decent enough game with lots of character. Though there's issues with the platforming, it's nothing you can't adjust to, and as said before, the artsy side of things like the animation, the sprites and the music are all great. Even navigating the menus is cool because of all the artwork they use to illustrate things. Hey, wait, that's still of the jungle! Nice! The only thing on the art front you could really say is a bit iffy is sometimes the enemy design is a little... lacking. I mean, I don't entirely know what this is, but it kind of unsettles me. That, and they occasionally just stop designing things themselves and just, you know, steal from Sonic. Yeah, jazz was a bit derivative, but at the same time, you've got to kind of look at it like this. PC platformers never really had the same pedigree as their console counterparts. When you compare it to PC platformers at the same time, it actually starts to look pretty damn good. It took four years before we saw another jazz game. Not entirely sure why it took so long. Are Epic developing anything else around that time? Oh. Okay, fair enough. The first thing you'll notice about Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 is that your view is pulled way out more, which solves most of the running into shit you can't see problems and makes the speed a lot more manageable. The only downside to this is you can't quite see the sprites as well because of how small they are, and that's a damn shame because once again, they're pretty good. Actually, overall, the game just looks way better than its predecessor with fancy effects on the projectiles, scrolling background and foreground elements, and just generally looking better. On top of the aesthetic improvements, you also have more gameplay options. You can now use your ears to hover, you can climb along stuff, and now have a ground pound attack so you can goomba stomp your enemies in dust if the need arises. Granted, Jazz is still a slippery little bastard, but the levels feel more designed around it now, so it's not as much of a hassle as it was before. The story this time around is that after rescuing the bodacious Eva Earlong in the previous game, her mother, the Queen, has allowed you to marry her. That's the, the princess, not, not the Queen. But Devon Shell, being the complete dick he is, stole the wedding ring to make a time machine. Obvs. 
This infuriates the Queen, who imprisons Jazz because I guess it was kinda his job to stop Devon, although putting Jazz in jail now does seem a little counterproductive. This does mean that the first thing you do in the game is escape from the dungeon and fight the first boss, which is the Queen, making this one of the very few games to feature DEATH BY MOTHER-IN-LAW! Another added feature is that you can also play as Jazz's brother, Spaz. Can't help but feel they wouldn't get away with that name now! He's got slightly different abilities to Jazz and was apparently created when the game's artist, Nick Stadler, got frustrated whilst working on the first game and took it out on Jazz by drawing a stupid looking version of him and calling it Spaz Slack Rabbit. The guys at the office apparently loved it, so he became a character in the sequel. Oh, there's also a third character called Laurie who was added in an expansion, but we don't have it, so we can't really comment. I guess the only real complaints here are that the music isn't quite as good, and it feels like they were a little conscious of imitating Sonic, so this time they just started lifting things from Rayman instead. There's also Casper the Vengeful Ghost here. We're not showing this to illustrate any kind of point. He's just fucking horrifying. Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 was definitely an improvement. But, like Mario, he wasn't long for the 2D platform. Soon, he would venture into the glorious world of 3D. A year after Jazz 2 was released, Epic began development of Jazz Jack Rabbit 3. Or is that Jazz Jack Rabbit 3D? Or just Jazz 3? See, they never settled on a name because it never got finished and it was cancelled early on in its development. But, fortunately for us, an early alpha build of the game was leaked online, so might as well take a look. It's understandably rough, but from what we can see, it wasn't really shaping up to be much of a jazz game, which is probably why they scrapped it. It's just much slower paced and far less platforming, which is a word, no matter what my word processor says. It might have been fun in its own way, but it's easy to see that jazz fans probably wouldn't have liked Jazz 3D since it lacked the fast paced action that attracted people to the previous games. Not everything works in 3D, but at least Epic seemed to get that. And like, oh, I don't know, Sega, or whichever fuckers made Bubsy. Oh, but the noises the tortoises make in this early build are. well. well, they're pretty incredible. Still, it's nice that this alpha version is out there. That way you don't end up idealising a game that never came out. You know, when you can try an early version of something and realise that it wasn't going to be anything special, it can kind of help you sleep better at night knowing that you're not really missing anything. Why well, yes, we are still bitter that Dark Millennium was cancelled. Fuck you, THQ. You fucked us. 2002 saw the final Jazz game in the form of a Game Boy Advance reboot of the series. And Christ does this bear all the signs of a game nobody had any faith in. The original creators neither developing nor publishing? Thrown out onto a completely different platform than all of its other incarnations? Needless redesign of the main character that only succeeds in making him more bland and generic? It also didn't bode well that the Wikipedia entry for this game was significantly shorter than the one for the Jazz game that didn't get released. But you can't judge a game by its box art or by its Wikipedia entry, so let's give it a go. Now, to be fair, this game isn't totally terrible. It's just not jazz. I mean, technically it's all here, you got guns and a green bunny, but it's just so slow and boring and the music's terrible and there's fucking fall damage. And why is he wearing trousers? I, I know it's a weird question, but he just looks nothing like his old design, and the enemies don't wear trousers, so it's not like it'd be weird if he didn't wear trousers. They could have at least given him a bandana, it would have been something, but no! We're stuck with trousers. Also, whilst we're talking about the design, in the old jazz games his gun was a cartoony blue pencil thing, which was fine since he was a cartoony green rabbit thing. In this version he can get a fucking Uzi. It just feels wrong, just like how it felt wrong giving Shadow the Hedgehog realistic looking guns. And you have no idea how much it hurts having to mention that game twice in one video. So Jazz Jack Rabbit just kind of fizzled out, and seeing as it's been 12 years since we've seen one, it's really doubtful we'll get another one after all this bloody time. Realistically, since Jazz Jack Rabbit was so often in the shadow of bigger names in the genre, its biggest impact was kickstarting its creators' careers. Arjan Bruce, eh? Or is that Arjan Bruce? Am I saying that right? This guy, as well as his work for Epic, co-founded Guerrilla Games where he worked on the Killzone series. Recently, he set up a new studio, Boss Key Productions, with the other jazz creator, Cliff Blazinski, who I guess you also might have heard of. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this retrospective, you can, I don't know, chuck us a like if you fancy it, with no pressure. It'd just be a real cool thing to do, and I hear that if, if you give videos that you like a like, it just, um, then you get a wish. So you should, yeah. Also, if you're new to our videos, you might want to check out another couple down there. You, you can see it, see that there? 
you should be the little arrow, like uh, there's that one. And there's probably another one. Maybe one more? Just, no, no, just two, just, I knew that. One day he wound up in a hospital bed. Full of drugs with a trip in his head. Somehow it's still less silly than Shadow the Hedgehog, but, you know, what isn't? What isn't? What? what isn't? What isn't? What isn't? More work! More work! Work, work! Work, work! You're the king! Right in I'm just like, communism, get out of the way! I'm trying to save my Eve Earlong princess bunny who's blue. It also didn't bode well that the Wikipedia muffin slut. <laughs> <laughs> Put, please put that in with no context. 